first football fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Bournemouth and Republic of Ireland Under-21 international Gavin Kilkenny, who is absolutely delighted to be holding a fresh Irish football fan TV microphone. Gavin, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. Yeah, all good. Yeah, we've got two big games coming up, but I want to talk to you firstly about Bournemouth, your form this season. I suppose I want to talk to you a bit about uh, Mark Travers as well, because I know you yeah. guys are close and it's great to see you both doing so well. Um, so talk to me from, from I suppose, pre-season right up to now and, and how, how things have been with you and the manager. And, and we'll come into Mark then after that. Yeah, I think it's been obviously really positive for myself. Um, obviously, like you said, the new staff came in and then the new manager. So it's probably just been a bit of a breath of fresh air for the whole squad and probably needed it at this point in my career. Probably needed a bit of something different maybe, you know, because obviously I've been working with the same staff for, since I broke in sort of two or three years ago. So... Um, Obviously, they moved on and they were brilliant for me. And then the new staff came in, and um, like I said, yeah, it's just been a breath of fresh air. And then just kind of different sort of views and different styles. And um, I think it's probably really suited me. And we've all really bought into it, and it's it's obviously paying off on the pitch, and we're doing really well as a team as well. So yeah, well, I know I said it to you before in a previous uh, press conference, but Scott Parker, like, what a player he was. I think he's actually underrated. But like yeah. when Chelsea were coming through, when they signed players like Damien Duff and so on, Scott Parker was in that first batch of players to you know, uh, come through there, that he went to um, Newcastle and a few other clubs, unbelievable at West Ham as well, even though they were struggling, he was still unbelievable for them. Um, yeah, I, I really think he's a very underrated player, but he seems to be a very good manager. It seems as though at Fulham, he was really liked. Bournemouth seems like yeah. he's really liked as well. And for you, it must be great getting kind of nuggets of information off him yeah. as a midfielder. Like. Um, yeah, yeah, he's been brilliant, like you said. Um, I think he's a top manager. I think... Um, his staff as well are brilliant. They really obviously compliment them really well. Um, and then I think the way he wants to play the game is perfect for us and as a squad, as a group of players, the players we have, it really suits us. And it's not just like, you know, people see us playing nice football and they think it's all kind of, I think it's probably similar with other teams that play nice football. You think it's all just nice, nice, but obviously there's a lot of hard work that goes into it and there's a lot of other aspects of the game. And I think that, especially for me, it, he's taught me and I've learned along the way playing in the championship that it's not all going to be nice and, nice to look at and all stuff so it's it's been um yeah an education probably to learn a lot from him i think you're going to be interrupted here by brian maher and andy lyons <laughs> i knew somebody was coming there lads how are getting it yeah have to keep your masks on lads <laughs> <laughs> um well sorry for the interruptions there we'll, we'll cut that out but uh so yeah you know look mark had a, a bit of a um situation early in the season at the Serbia game and stuff like that yeah. and in my opinion he was getting abused at something that he really shouldn't have gotten abused off certain yeah. fans or whatever but that's besides the point but I think it's it's unbelievable to see how well he's bounced back he's got a spot on the team just like yourself yeah. probably a few years ago the two of were kind of looked upon you were going to make that step didn't really happen mm -hmm. but now it looks like it's it's happening for you both which is great to see yeah, Mark's doing brilliant like you said I think he was probably a bit unfortunate I think people definitely overreacted um, yeah at the time, I think, he, and he's definitely probably shown people since how good he is, and um, I think he's probably one of the most <laughs> underrated people. Um, like people just have almost sort of overlooked him a little bit. I think now he's probably shown people how good he is, and that um, he's there to stay. Sort of when he's shown his form at Bournemouth, um, he's been unbelievable. I think he has like nine clean sheets. Is it more clean sheets? Like he has every away clean sheet. I don't know what the exact stats are, but he's doing really well, and I think. Um, probably a lot of people have realised that maybe what they thought was not true and I always knew I think a lot most people knew it in Bournemouth but everyone knew at Bournemouth that how good a goalkeeper he is and that um, yeah he's we've known his talent for a while now I think it was only a matter of time before he broke in and eventually started playing so I think we're seeing that now I think that shows his character though because yeah. other players probably would have crumbled he wasn't really playing at the time he wasn't you know because I think that was the worry he was probably the keeper at the most experience at the time but probably hadn't been playing and now it's kind of flipped on its head. He's, he's probably our top performing goalkeeper, but for yeah. some reason he's like the lowest in the pecking order. But yeah. that's a story for a different day. But it's great to see him bounce back. It was, it was the point I was making there. Yeah. You've got Robbie Brady came in now as well. What's he been like for you? Because, you know, I'm sure the first thing is you, when you saw him was Italy 2016, <laughs> the header. Um, yeah, well, obviously I knew I knew a Robbie since I was obviously a young kid. So oh, St. Kevin's, yeah. Yeah, when you come through, obviously Kevin's just like names that you look at but he's probably the name that stands out when you think of players um, probably himself and Jeff so 
Um, yeah, I walked in the first, it was actually the first day after the last international window and he came in, or one of the first few days, I'm not sure exactly, but um, came in, you kind of look, you're like, oh, Robbie Brady's here. It's obviously, like, a big thing. Um, so, and obviously came through Kevin, so obviously does that connection. But, yeah, he's been brilliant. Um, he's looked really good in training, and I'm sure he's probably come into the side and or into the squad. He's obviously in the squad for the last few games, but he'll definitely come into the side, I'd say, in the next few weeks. So And then hopefully he'll get back in and amongst the Ireland setup and you pick up from where he left off, sort of thing. Yeah, it's great to see him back uh, back playing regularly and stuff like that, because I think he... I, I, Bournemouth, I think, will benefit from that. Second yeah. half of the season, you'll be like a new sign. Well, he kind of is, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and then you'll have, uh, hopefully, he'll be in the Ireland squad then come the, the turn of next year. But um, I suppose, uh, looking back to the Italy game two years ago, I think you were in the squad for that. Um, the one in Pala, yeah. 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 So now you're kind of one of the more featured players this time around. I suppose you And you're playing at senior level now in, in men's football more so. So I suppose... What's the change been like for you and, and how much are you looking forward to this game and then the Sweden game on top of that? Yeah, I think they're two massive games, obviously. I think they've came at the right time in the sense that we've had a disappointing result in the last game against uh, Montenegro. So now we need to... A little bit over hands. But yeah, anyway. yeah, exactly. So now it's it's sort of like we know that we're probably coming into this game as the underdogs and um, probably have to take pride in that in a sense. That's probably what Irish teams are usually seen as, but we have to take, um, like I said, take pride in that and... We know that we have to get results here or else um, it'll be tough from here on in. So I think that's obviously good because we've nothing to lose here. We're going to have a right go in Tallaght in front of the home fans. So I think it's probably set up to hopefully be a really special night. Yeah, I think there's a lot more players playing first team men's football now than there probably was back then. There were yeah. A lot of players were breaking through at under 23 level and stuff like that. But, you know, if Connor Coventry, he's got a long move now. Uh, Peterborough, um, then you've got uh, Joe Bagan at Cardiff, you've got yourself at Bournemouth. There's a lot of players there that are actually playing yeah. men's football now rather than just, say, underage and into the 21 setup. I think that'd be a massive uh, bonus for you this time around. Mm -hmm. and having that experience now, Mark McGuinness as well at Cardiff as well. So you've got yeah. a good nucleus there playing first team football. Yeah, we have, there's experience in the group, and obviously there's players like Lee who's played. God yeah. knows how many caps he's played. So he's he's played obviously the whole last campaign. So was Cov. Um, so we have a lot of experience. We have players that have been there and know what it takes to win these games. So um, obviously we need to lean on that. And then we have a lot of young players coming through. Who are exciting and um, kind of like a breath of fresh air. So so they have no fear. And I think we have what it takes to beat both both teams. So um, we'll go in there confident and obviously give it a good go. We're not gonna sit off and obviously there'll be periods of the game where they're going to have possession but we'll go there and have a right go and um, back ourselves to, to beat them hopefully yeah well it's refreshing to hear that Jake said something similar as well when he was sitting in here a few minutes ago but uh, I, I was saying to him as well just one last thing just to finish up on is you know we've seen the pathway you've mentioned there even with Lee like he did get called up as well there's been players there Connor was, was drafted in to train with the squad as well there's been players there that have been brought in from 21 level right the way up um, I suppose that gives you must give you hope. Obviously, you keep performing like you're at club yeah. level. That there is that opportunity will come uh, at some stage to play for the senior. So I know your primary focus is on the twenty ones, yeah. but it gives you that opportunity then in the future that the door is open. And you know, you see so many players that Stephen has brought through since he left as under twenty one manager. He obviously had you in that twenty one yeah. group as well, so he'd know you too. You know. Yeah, I think like you said, it's just we know that there's a manager there now, um, in Stephen Kenny. Obviously that. Um, trust young players and is willing to he's not afraid to bring us up and he's not afraid to give us a chance so um, the young players who've gone up have done brilliant and obviously you look at that like myself and um, players amongst the squad you take like motivation and sort of inspiration from that and I think even for younger kids who, who are still young and stuff coming into the game or whatever they can take pride in the fact that there's a pathway there there's a chance there and I think it just kind of gives the whole of Irish football a lift um, and gets probably more people into the game even kids wise so yeah, I think it's obviously brilliant and I think Irish football is obviously going in the right direction now. You've seen in the last window with the senior team, they put in some really good performances and we're starting to, to play some good football. So, yeah, it's all positive, really. Onwards and upwards, as they say. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. Best of luck for uh, the upcoming games and for the rest of the season if I don't see you as well, right? Thanks, Cheers, thank you.